Let's talk about the fascia as a sensory organ. Our fascia connects to every single structure in our body. When I was in naturopathic medical school, it was the thin covering around organs that we would peel back in cadaver lab to get at the actual structure. We now know that fascia is much more than the scaffolding of the body. It creates this network throughout our body. It starts at our most external layers of our skin all the way down to our bones, our most internal layers. And this fascia is made up of connective tissue. And connective tissue is mostly collagen. And collagen creates these tropocollagen tubules, these really small tubules that exist and span throughout the body. And they're completely covered in water, in this special cell-bound water that we'll be talking about a little bit more in the next video. But in this video, I want to talk about fascia as a sensory organ. Our fascia holds the most sensory nerve endings in it than any other organ in the body. It is innervated with these sensory nerves running throughout the fascial network. And our fascia has many different ways in which it receives these pain sensations. When we're talking about pain, we're talking about this cyclical response to an environmental trigger. Let's say we stub our toe on something. That initial pain creates a sensory innervation through a sensory nerve up into our prefrontal cortex, that part of our body that is rational, that is making decisions, and it also goes into our limbic system, our emotional centers of the brain. Have you ever banged your elbow on something and gotten mad at that something, right? There is an emotional component to pain as well. This circuit can become really worn in conditions of chronic pain. So we see that the pain isn't just the initiation of pain through a sensory nerve up into the prefrontal cortex, into the limbic centers, the emotional centers of the brain. We see that when we are in a heightened sympathetic state in our nervous system. We have the sympathetic state, which is that fight, flight, or freeze part of our nervous system. We also have the parasympathetic side of our nervous system, that rest, you are safe, you can digest and repair part of the nervous system. We're meant to vacillate between the two, but many of us get stuck in that sympathetic state, that fight, flight, or freeze part of the nervous system. We are under an immense amount of pressures in modern day life to produce, to be the perfect uh, community member, the perfect mother or father or family member. There is so much pressure on us to produce and be productive and this can lead to a sympathetic nervous system overload. There's so much information. There is an unpredictability in our world right now a lack of safety that can shunt many of us into a paralyzation where we are locked into the sympathetic overdrive. When we are in that state, we don't need to have that physical input to create a sensation of pain. That sympathetic dominance in our nervous system can create ruminating thoughts that trigger those limbic centers in the brain that then tell our prefrontal cortex, okay, we're feeling pain. That pain cycle acts in reverse. And our fascia holds many different components to our sensations of pain. One of them is this relationship with adhered, stuck, stiff tissue in the fascia. That has been related to feelings of anxiety, to depression, and to pain. And when those tissues are released, when they are released manually, somebody else doing a fascial maneuver, doing myofascial release, doing some kind of body work, or when we are using our own hands to do fascial maneuvers, we see that there is a decrease in those feelings, in the feelings of anxiety and depression. We see that 
that there's this relationship where we have tight, adhered, stuck fascia, and that produces these feelings of anxiety and depression. This two-way street, much like pain is. And like I said, fascia is this immense sensory organ in the body. And when we are approaching our fascia, individually on a self-care regime, looking to create better flowing fascia, looking to create a safe, more resilient nervous system, looking to unwind trauma, we are looking to address these adhesions in our fascia. We can do that ourselves with fascial maneuvers. We can do that with the help of a professional, myofascial release, body work, all kinds of manual body work. We can do that in many different things that affect our fascia, including hydration, which we'll talk about in the next video, circadian rhythm, getting up with the rising of the sun, getting that morning light, getting natural light breaks throughout the day, making sure that we are lowering the lights at night so that we start those cascades that happen in darkness. So many different cascades happen when we go out in that morning sunlight, biological cascades in our hormonal system, immune system, neurological system, our neurotransmitters, our metabolic pathways, and also our health and laying down of fascia. And the same thing can be said when the sun goes down. Down, making sure that we're not exposed to artificial light so that we get the repair mechanisms that are so vital to our fascial system. So aligning our circadian rhythm, getting hydrated, making sure that we're having some kind of gentle movement. Our fascia is piezoelectric. When it is deformed, it creates an electrical current. And getting that regularly in our routine is foundational for healthy fascia and to help regulate those pain cycles and those mental emotional aspects of fascial adhesions. Thank you so much for joining me and please stay tuned for more.